Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm <clears throat> hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. Um, today's upload is going to be a, uh, a update on the pet weather, just the weather update. Uh, you know, what's going on, what's in terms of precip temperature, what's to come. Uh, this is actually getting recorded the day before, but since it's a long range, not much is going to really change in terms of the weather models. I mean, they've been pretty consistent, so just letting you know, that's why some of these weather models are still from uh, the 30th. We, you'll be watching this the 31st or the 1st of August, probably, most likely. Um, before we get into the video, I would uh, recommend, or obviously I'd recommend, this is my channel, but uh, consider really subscribing to uh, this channel, really consider it, and consider liking the video as well. You could go check out this channel, it's weather related content, and then you could decide whether you want to subscribe. If you are subscribed, make sure you have that bell notification icon turned on, just so you get notified every time I upload a video. So that is all peachy and done, let's get into the weather data. So right now we're looking at the GFS, which is the Global Forecasting System, and you could see that if we were to look at the pattern right now, uh, let's draw this out, the jet stream is doing something like this, Nigger, you could see it's uh, diving down into the south and going back up, which is you can, uh, which is marked by this blue, these uh, these geopotential height, uh, and this uh, this 500 millibar geopotential height is it basically just brings in cooler air for these locations. Um, by a while, there's a high pressure right there, um, building with some heat. So uh, the southwest will continue to stay warm. However, notice if we go further a little bit further into the upcoming days uh it could start getting warmer because if you look at the again if you look at the uh the same thing you can see the high pressure is getting stronger spinning the winds and that is sending the cold or the chill uh, a little bit further this is kind of what was earlier here's a second piece of it and the, the, here's our next attack, or te you know if you want to call it that but the, which would come later next week but this is friday so the weekend should be fairly warm, fairly warm across much a good portion of the country, especially if you go further west. The further west you go, the the bigger chance you have for um for a for a uh, how do I say this for I'm losing my chance out sorry for uh, for warmth. And if we go further and further, you can see uh it will get dwindled or I should say hindered in the east because. While this warmth is growing, the, 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 I guess the sec the piece, the second piece that was stuck from this initial trough kind of remains in the Gulf of Mexico and it doesn't give up easily. You can see it kind of develops its own little trough right there. And this also intensifies, especially across in... Sorry about that. Especially, especially across the Northeast. And if you're... Oh my God. Especially across the Northeast. And I wanted to show you that... You could see the jet stream is taking another dive. Let's go a little bit further. It's taking another dive right here and uh, bringing the chill back into the eastern U.S. While the west is still warmer, you could see by that ridge. Um, we go further in time. We see another uh, feature which originates from the Pacific Ocean. Notice how it travels. It's going to travel through uh, Saskatchewan, through Manitoba, and then it uh, goes into Quebec. I think this is Quebec. Uh, uh, the province of Quebec. Is that? Yeah, I think that's... Right, and, and you can see <clears throat> that uh, it, it intensifies and brings in a blast of chillier air. Notice that jet stream again would take a dip, especially around the Great Lakes and into the southeast. Also, potentially dip into the northwest, so possibly some relief for California. And then we start things uh, start things uh, start seeing things go crazy. So. Basically, what was up here earlier on in the forecasting uh, period is now sending its way down into the south, and you can see that this starts evolving into a into a fairly significant threat of chillier air. You could see that little dark blue line. If I could outline it, hopefully you know what I'm. Hopefully you know what I'm seeing right now. Uh, that that line right there, that thick line. That is actually the 32 degree uh, line, which means that that is where the frost is occurring. Obviously, this is way up to the north. I mean, the distance here is probably around 3,000, 3,000 to 4,000 miles. So that is uh, plenty up to the north. But um, if we were to uh, look at this further into the forecasting period, uh, it actually starts, you know, sending these little shock waves of chillier air. The jet stream starts buckling again, and it. And it kind of almost amplifies. Notice how there could be a little bit of heat trying to build in from the west. 
But then this feature goes really far to the south. And look at that. The 32 degree line is really expanding now. Um, we really start seeing here. Uh, we really start seeing this uh, this blue line starting to make its way down to the south. Obviously, it would be a while before it does make its way um, to the south. You know, the U.S., northern U.S., um, relatively speaking, the south. Again, northern U.S. But this, you know, it's not uncommon. We... I'm not saying this is, uh, you know, unheard of. This usually does happen sometimes across uh, Canada and the North Pole, essentially. I mean, this is basically North Pole, just a little bit uh, south, just a little bit further south. But uh, you can see that it gets it gets pretty far to the south. And I just want to give you a comparison on this map. It may not seem like if it's a big distance, but uh, near, uh, but if you were to go um, right there in that area where that green dot is, where I have that green, that's actually there's actually a polar bear park right there. I think it's like a national polar bear park, and uh, that is. Is, yeah, so that's it must be chilly there and you can see this uh, wait what polar bears only that far to the north of Minnesota It may seem like it, but that's actually a healthy distance and uh, You know that's still very far to the north But I mean, you know, it's just I just wanted to show you because it's interesting usually at this time of the year it would be somewhere like uh, somewhere up here by over by Greenland where uh, where it was where it's gonna be somewhere similar to right now you could see you'd be up there but I mean towards the end of the forecasting period possibly you know dipping down and even if this doesn't make its way um, into the US like, uh, you know fully the I guess the Arctic bias you could still see that if it even makes a, its way a little bit down to the south the, the jet stream still buckles and it sends chill um, across the northeastern, I would say one one fourth of the country, at least as of now. But I think this would push even further south, and something like this would be filled in with cold. So definitely something to keep in track, um, keep an eye on for because uh, it could be an interesting. It could be very interesting. And notice that dark anomaly. You can see that is uh, basically showing that it's 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 hefty. It's a hefty. Um, change in height and that is uh, basically indicating that that 32 degree line is much um, more closer to reality than you think it is so uh, if we were to look at the 8 to 14 day outlook which if this were to occur this would be somewhere in that 15th 14 13 of August and if you look at this 8 to 14 day outlook 7th through 13th of July they're showing below average conditions, and it makes sense, perfectly makes sense. I mean, that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, that obviously, the confidence is low, and my confidence is not higher either. This could still change, but generally, we've been seeing a pattern for chillier air starting to make its way down from Canada. And, uh, you know, it's there's many locations across North Dakota and, uh, and Montana and Minnesota that see their first frost in September. Um... I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm talking about the far extreme northern location, like places like International Falls. I, I think it's late September or, or mid-September they see their uh, first frosts. But that depends on the season again. It could, I mean, we could be looking at uh, the first frosts possibly entering the U.S. as soon as in the next one to two weeks. And we could be looking at them uh, three to four weeks, and it all depends on whether it's below or above average. And right now it looks below average, so I think we could really soon start seeing some frosts in the higher elevated areas. I'm not, you know, speaking of major populated areas, seeing frosts like Minneapolis or Green Bay. You're still way too far to, uh, the, 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 you know, way too far away from that. But the, the Yellowstone Mountains, the, uh, the Grand Tetons, the Rockies, the Cascades, we could start definitely seeing some. I was here in Nevada seeing some frost but uh yeah so i just wanted to give you an update on this and if we were to look at the precip you can see this is actually before we look at the precip i, I want to um go to the european model because i was just showing you the gfs model which uh, you may not be happy with because some people don't like the gfs so let's wait for this to load and show you what the european model is showing the european model is showing not something that is so impressive as a gfs still showing you could see that initial cool off that big warming, uh, this one, the European model is even more um, apt or it has it more in its favor, the warmth. And you can see it's a fairly big ridge. And basically at this point, it also has that second piece of energy from that first wave starting to develop, which puts a hinder, um, uh, puts a hinder on the... On the 
warmer temperatures across the east and notice how there's also several features that come down and bring chillier temperatures so uh you know both models are in fairly good agreement if you look towards uh, more and more towards the end of the year uh the european model forecasting uh period you can see that again they this only is 240 hours out the gfs is 364 hours out or 384 sorry and if you look at uh, the 240 hour they have a ridge here possibly going or a trough it's trying to make its way down into the into uh, I would say southern Canada northern US and if we were to look uh, at the GFS at 240 hours um, uh, let's wait for this to load uh, I don't really want the newest model, and I want the one that's fully in. If you look at 240 hours, you can see they have a similar trough right there, just a little bit further to the west, which uh, eventually starts spinning up this interesting feature again. So, uh, you know, very interesting in my opinion, and nothing record-breaking, nothing historic at this point yet, but just something I'd like to share with you and give you an update on. In terms of the precipitation, uh, let's go to let's change obviously the outline and let's go to uh let's just go to hmm, i don't know if i will be able to i'm still you know getting uh used to this map because this is the new i just got the weathermodels.com and i've been fairly new to it um i haven't been uh, using it for a long time like many people have been because it's paid you have to pay to get this so i finally have paid and I finally have it, but this is taking quite a while to load. But in terms of the pet temper, uh, this is actually a very cool feature. I just first discovered it. And I'm not saying I'm the first one to discover it. I'm just saying I discovered it right now. But you can see nothing too incredible in terms of rain. It's actually going to be more of a below average pattern across uh, the U.S. And, if, and, you know, it doesn't seem to be above average really um, in a substantial area. Maybe across the north, but generally drier across the south and the west and northeast. So that's just something to point out. Um, but no, no, no big storms at this point. Um, that's you know the fall and winter and springtime, the summer, and the late summer isn't really known for its big storms. So uh, that's uh, you know that's basically what I want to update you guys on. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.